Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Sephron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Much Brew About Nothing. So this week, we got a special episode. We're not playing an instant deck deck deck. Instead, I want to show off this deck that I've been playing for fun lately. This is one of the Seth brews. So this is Esper Solemnity. Basically, I've always loved Solemnity and locking people with Solemnity, and a couple of things happen that push this deck to the forefront of my personal brew. So first off, I realized that worship locking people wasn't very good right now, so I needed to find another way to get my locking people out of the game fix. And then we played Snow Limnity on Against the Odds, and I was impressed by just how good the lock actually was right now. So I did some research, did some brewing, and realized that actually locking people with Phyrexian on Life in Solemnity is in a pretty good place in Modern right now. Not a lot of main deck hate for it and even the sideboard hate often focused on enchantments so we can actually with a little bit of careful building to answer a couple of specific things make the solemnity phyrexian unlife lock really really hard and really effective so anyway a quick reminder before we break down esper solemnity for modern if you enjoy this deck and you enjoy much brew in general it would be so awesome of you if you could take a second click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen it's a great way to support the channel and and the site for free. So let's talk Solemnity, and of course, we are built around the lock. We are all in on the Solemnity lock. This is our primary plan. So basically, if we get out of Solemnity, Players and things except for Planeswalkers, basically, can't get counters. Phyrexian Own Life makes it so once we get below zero life, all damage that's dealt to us is dealt as if it was infect counters. We also don't lose for going below zero life. So essentially, if we have Solemnity and Phyrexian Own Life on the battlefield, we just can't die to any damage-based stuff, any life drain stuff. We can get milled out. We can get annihilated by an Emrakul or something. But basically, we can't die to any damage-based stuff until our opponent kills our enchantments. So that is the main plan of the deck, is just to lock people with these two enchantments. Also worth pointing out that both enchantments on their own can be very good in individual matchups. So like, for example, against Burn, Phyrexian on Life, even without Solemnity, while we're waiting to find our Solemnity, is super, super good. Almost game-winning on its own. Solemnity, on the other hand, against like five-color humans that are playing Aether Vials, looking to put plus one, plus one counters on their creatures, is just a really good card against in fact, obviously, it's insane. So we get random free wins with either of our enchantments, but together is where the real power lies. So to find our Slimity and Phyrexian on life, we can't just trust that we're going to draw them off the top of our deck. So for this, we have Zer the Enchanter. You've seen this one before. It's kind of my favorite way to tutor up Phyrexian on life Slimities. We also have Drift of Phantasms, which does some interesting things. So Drift is different than Zer because it can search for anything that's converted mana cost three, which is really important when it comes to actually finish the game that we'll talk about in a minute. So we want to be able to tutor up not just enchantments that cost three, which we can get with Zur along with cheaper enchantments, but non-enchantment permanents that cost three as well. So those are ways to find Solemnity and Zur all together. This means we have a lot of copies of Solemnity and Phyrexian on Life in our deck because we really want to get this set up as consistently as possible, as quickly as possible. By turn four, we want to have both of these on the battlefield, if at all possible. Definitely by turn five to give us a chance to lock our opponent out of the game. So as far as our other tutor targets, both Drift of Phantasms and Zer the Enchanter can get our removal. So Ghostly Prison for creature-based matchups, Detention Sphere mostly for creature-based matchups, but it can hit stuff against Lantern Control, can hit Planeswalkers, so we can tutor up our removal with it. And then Zer itself can get Greater Oromancy, which is really key as like a third combo piece. So normally, when we're tutoring out our pieces, we want to get either Phyrexian, Unlife, or Solemnity first, depending on the matchup. Then we want to get the other piece of the lock. So either the Solemnity or the Unlife, the one that we don't already have. Then the third thing we get is often Greater Oromancy, which basically means our opponent can't kill our lock with one removal spell. If they happen to have an answer, like an Abrupt Decay, they have to first kill the Greater Oromancy, and then start going after our Solemnities. And the trick here is that then we can keep tutoring 
covering up more solemnities and more Phyrexian unlifes with our Xur, which means the time that Greater Ormancy buys us is usually enough to get redundant combo pieces for each of our combo pieces, which means we basically can't lose at that point. By the time we get two solemnities, two Phyrexian unlifes, there are very few main deck cards that can get our opponent out of that. And then after sideboarding, we have other answers. We can also tutor out Search for his Kanta, which is really good for helping us cycle through our deck. It filters, eventually it flips around, and we have tons of non-creatures, very few creatures in our deck. So we're just getting removal spells, getting more enchantments, finding more combo pieces, more lock pieces. We can also get a Rune Halo, which is our main deck spell hate card. We can name Valica so we don't get got by the Titan Shift deck. We can name Grape Shot so we don't get stormed off and killed that way. So kind of just a spell-based hate card. As far as our finisher, our big plan for winning the game is not fast, but it is really effective. So we mentioned wanting to use Drift of Phantasm to get non-enchantments, and the non-enchantment we are getting is Crucible of Worlds. So Crucible of Worlds is essentially our finisher in two different ways. So step one is we can just hard lock our opponent out of the game as far as mana is concerned. We got a Field of Ruin, we got three Ghost Quarters, so once we have the Solemnity Lock in place and we have it set up pretty safely, then we just start attacking our opponent's lands every single turn. Eventually, the end result is with Crucible that maybe we tutored up with Drift of Phantasms. We are just going to strip mine our opponent out of the game one land at a time, and then at that point, we can win with Zer damage one at a time if we want to. We can win any super slow way possible if our opponent doesn't have any lands and we're locked out of dying to damage. We also have creature lands, and Crucible doesn't directly work with them, but it gives us some protection. So to speed up the clock and not just have to attack 20 times with Zer, Creeping Tar Pit gets in unblockable, three damage a turn, Colonnade, four damage in the air each turn, a shambling event can hit for two. So Crucible makes sure if our opponent has Ghost Quarters or Fatal Pushes, things like that, that we can just keep getting our creature lands back from the deck, which gives us an inevitability that we wouldn't normally have with just four creature lands. It's definitely possible we could get Fatal Push and Ghost Quartered out of the game, but with Crucible of Worlds to keep getting back our creature lands, pretty unlikely that's going to happen. The rest of the deck, we got the discard package, three Thought Seed, three Inquisition, one Collection Brutality, gives us something to do on turn one, turn two, gets rid of things that can disrupt our lock preemptively before we start playing our Solemnities on turn three, our Phyrexian on Life's on turn three. Then we have some removal, Fatal Push, Path to Exile for the early game, just trying to stabilize. That's all this deck wants to do is stabilize until turn three, turn four, when we play our lock pieces, and then just harden that lock, harden that lock, harden that lock, until there's basically no way we can lose and then we win eventually. And then Logic Knot just gives us an extra safety net card, basically. If our opponent's playing a random engineered explosives in their main deck, Logic Knot is an answer. If they're playing some crazy thing that shouldn't be in their main deck, Fracturing Gust, Logic Knot is an answer. So it's just a safety net for any weird thing that could happen, and weird things happen in Modern all the time, because there are so many decks, so many cards. So it's just a way we can deal with anything that could happen to disrupt our lock. As far as the rest of the mana, basically just Shock Land, fetch lands, basic lands. The main lands are the creature lands that we talked about, the ghost quarters, the field of the ruins. That's the important stuff. Although it's worth mentioning that we have eight fetch lands. We can keep getting all of our lands out of the deck. If we get our crucible of world, just keep fetching every turn again and again to thin out our deck and draw more action. Sideboard wise, we're mostly focused on our tutoring. So Nevermore, Rule of Law, Detention Sphere can get got by both Xur and our Drift of Phantasms. Nevermore basically for spells, for combo decks, Rule of Law for Storm, Detention Sphere, Catch all removal. Then we have some stuff that only gets got by our Drift of Phantasms, but a Kitchen Finks for aggro and burn goes infinite essentially with Solemnity. If we get Solemnity down, whenever Finks dies, it comes back in with no counter, so it's just like an infinite blocker in life gain. We can't sack it and go infinite ourselves, but it's still really hard for an aggro deck to get through. Lost Legacy for combo decks, Titan Shift, things like that, Storm decks, Fulminator for a bit more land destruction. Then, as far as just Zer targets, Greater Ormancy, it's important to bring in the second one after sideboard because people are going to bring in more ways to blow up our lock. So with two greater Oromancies, they're giving each other Shroud, which means target or removal can just never destroy our lock. Our opponent needs a Fracturing Gust, something that blows up all enchantments, which are pretty rare in the format. Stony's Islands for Affinity for Tron, Rest in Peace for Graveyards, Rune Halo, more combo hate. 
Surgical for graveyards, then Pithy Needle is basically in the deck to answer engineered explosives. That's a one card from the sideboard that tends to get us, because both of our lock pieces cost three mana, so we want to preemptively bring in Pithy Needle to name engineered explosives in some matchups, because that is a way our opponent can get out from under our lock that avoids all of our other protection, basically. And then negate kind of the same way, just counter the explosives before it comes down or a fracturing gust or something. And that is Esper Solemnity, and that's our much a brew deck for this week so i think this deck's super sweet i think it's actually surprisingly competitive i think it has the ability to compete with a lot of the tier decks like i said before i feel like the lock is just in a really good place the format is just soft to this right now they don't have the enchantment hate there's not a lot of main deck cards that deal with it so i feel like this is the time for esper solemnity and the solemnity lock to really be competitive in modern of course that'll change people will start playing cards that deal with it eventually if it catches on but this is the time you can jank in and really beat a lot of decks with Solemnity and Phyrexian on life. Plus, like I mentioned, both cards are just in good places right now. With five color human, Solemnity is better than normal. The return of it, in fact, makes Solemnity better than normal. So we're not just playing do-nothings. We're doing things that actually matter in some matchups. And then when the power of Solemnity and Unlife combined, it's just unbeatable for a really high percentage of decks in the modern format. So anyway, that's our deck for this week. Gonna stop rambling. Let's get to our league. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the gameplay videos and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, take a second and click that like button down below. It's a great way to help support the channel for free. And you can find the next video in the playlist right here.